Welcome back to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. As you know by now, we are being hit with one of the worst flu epidemics in recent history. It's hitting New Jersey particularly hard. In a moment, we'll talk to the state epidemiologist about what we can expect from here on out. But here's Ellen Kaloje to give you some of the numbers. Thank you, Larry. The flu is most definitely hitting the country hard this year, especially in states like New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and New York. Patients are flocking to emergency rooms, doctor's offices, and urgent care centers. And anyone who's had the flu rip through their house will tell you it's not fun. They're coughing and a fever just makes you feel like garbage and you just want to you know, be able to do something to comfort them and you really just can't. So, um, and it's terrible. And when you have multiple, usually you could juggle one, well, one is sick and the other one is sick, but when multiple are sick at the same time. There's not a whole lot you can do when the flu knocks out everyone in your house. That's what happened to the McCall family. But luckily, mom stayed healthy enough to take care of everyone else. Or 13-year-old Julia doesn't know how she would have survived. It felt like I was going to die. I, act, I prayed every single night that I had the flu, that I was not going to die. That might sound extreme, but baby Lucia ended up in the emergency room with a 105 degree fever and a small seizure. Which was very scary. I mean, you feel incredibly helpless as a mom. But thankfully, all the girls and even dad Kevin got back to their old selves within a week. The McCalls certainly haven't been alone dealing with what's shaping up to be one of the worst flu seasons New Jersey and the surrounding states have seen in years. Health officials say the cold winter is one reason because it makes the influenza virus more resilient. Scientists also say the flu vaccine is usually 40 to 60 percent effective. But this year, it looks like it could be closer to 30 percent. Now, that's because researchers have to guess what strains will be floating around before making the vaccine, and it's never 100 percent correct. So far, there have been two official deaths from the flu in New Jersey. A four-year-old girl from Bergen County died in December, and more recently, a six-year-old girl from Hudson County died. The CDC says the telltale signs of flu include fever, chills, a cough, a sore throat, a runny and or a stuffy nose, body aches, headaches, and fatigue, and sometimes vomiting and diarrhea. And even though everyone in the McCall family had the flu shot and four out of five still came down with the virus, they would absolutely get the shot again. We get it every year without fail, and we'll still get it every year uh, without fail because even if it is only whatever 40% effective, that's still 40% effective. So, you know, we will absolutely always get the flu shot in this house. So all the experts agree that it's not too late to still get the flu shot because they say we could still see cases well into April this year. But if you decide not to get the shot, there's one thing they say we can all do that's very simple, but we often forget. Wash our hands a lot. Reporting for Jersey Matters, I'm Ellen Kaloje. All right, thank you, Ellen. Let's continue our conversation on what has become an international flu epidemic, but we're going to focus on New Jersey with Dr. Tina Tan, who is an assistant commissioner and state epidemiologist for New Jersey. Thank you so much. When it comes to New Jersey, do we have some figures? Do we know how bad it's been in New Jersey? Yeah, right now in New Jersey, we're definitely seeing high levels of influenza-like illness activity throughout the state. And, you know, this is very similar to what we're seeing throughout the country as well. I keep hearing numbers. I hear 10,000 cases. I hear 3,000 new cases a week. I hear that hospitals are overflowing with patients. Can you separate fact from fiction? Is all that true? Yeah, you know, we're definitely seeing increased levels of uh, visits to emergency departments above what we typically have seen in previous years. Um, so we're definitely seeing high levels of flu activity in those emergency departments as well as in long-term care facilities. What happened? Did the, the, everybody gets the flu shot and it seems like the flu shot was not as effective as it has it been in the past. Did they, did they mess up figuring out what viruses they should, they should be uh, vaccinating for? 
Well, actually, the flu vaccine, the seasonal flu vaccine that we're using this year, you know, there's actually a good match with what are the viruses that are circulating in the community on the whole. Um, you know, what we take a look at is what's called vaccine effectiveness, about how well the vaccine actually works in the community, um, you know, in terms of protecting individuals, um, uh, you know, from what's circulating. So there are a lot of things that um, could be uh, factored into why um, a flu vaccine might not be as effective. You know, you take a look at, um, you know, prote uh, particular issues um, with an individual, like, for example, a person may be exposed to, you know, flu from several years ago, and that might give uh, a person more protection on top of uh, the protection from the flu vaccine itself. So there are a lot of different factors that go into it. So they vaccinated for four strains, right, this time around. And it's H3N2 that is the one that they have not been able to beat. That's the one that's been predominantly the problem. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, well, the thing is right now, um, perhaps what you're referring to is um, the various vaccine effectiveness numbers that we've heard from other countries. There have been some early numbers, um, vaccine effectiveness studies in Australia as well as in Canada, um, where um, it's been shown that the vaccine effectiveness for the H3N2 component um, is a little bit lower than for the other components. It's important to look at the vaccine effectiveness of the entire uh, vaccine because, uh, you know, as you had mentioned, the vaccine itself protects against three, two, four, uh, three or four different types of vaccine strains, depending on the type of vaccine that you get. So, you know, it's important to remember that even though um, the effective effectiveness for H3N2 might be a little bit lower, you know, the vaccine still protects against other types like type B. And we have to remember that um, type B is also circulating in the community right now. And that tends to actually uh, continue in the flu season a little bit later into the flu season. And that's why you're telling people to still go out and get a flu shot. That's right. Even though it may not protect from this one strain that seems to be predominant, yeah. at least in the hospitals, it does protect against the other strains. That's right. And, and even so, even with H3N2, you know, there is a lot of evidence out there that shows that even getting vaccinated um, uh, in an H3N2 year, you know, you could still be protected from more severe illnesses. Um, you can be uh, such as um, severe complications and um, hospitalization by getting that vaccine. It's getting a lot of media this year. And you must look at that and say, wait a second, every year there's a problem with mm -hmm. this. Thousands mm -hmm. die every yeah. year. That's right. Flu is an issue every single year, and unfortunately, flu is unpredictable. So that's why we always are out there with our mantra, our public health mantra, that it's so important to take the, uh, take the time, get vaccinated, because you don't want to only protect yourself, but you have to think about um, the protection that you give to the rest of the community. There's some people, for example, who are too young to get vaccinated or can't get vaccinated because they might have underlying medical conditions. So we have to take our step, not only to protect ourselves, but also those who cannot get vaccinated. So I know there's people out there now that are still worried about this. The number one recommendation is if you haven't gotten the flu shot, still get it mm -hmm. because the flu season isn't over. What else can they do? Um, the other thing is common sense approach is wash your hands. And this is actually a good thing for preventing not only flu, but also other respiratory viruses. There are a lot of um, uh, stomach bugs that are circulating this time of the year too. So Washing your hands really well will uh, will protect you against that. Stay home when you're sick. Uh, make sure that um, you know if you have a fever, wait 24 hours after the fever um, goes away without any sort of fever reducing medications like Tylenol or Advil, so that you can again pr uh, protect. Uh, not only yourself so that you don't get sicker by going out uh, to work or to school, um, but also to make sure that you protect the, uh, uh, other people from getting your illness. So the, the vaccine, if I were to go out now, I mm -hmm. got my flu shot, but if, if I didn't get it and I was going to run out and get a flu <laughs> shot right now, did, did they change it? Will that now protect me from H3N2? Uh, the same flu vaccines are, you know, that have been available at the beginning of the season are the same ones that um, that are available now. Um, Why don't they change it? Um, once, once they see what's happening. Every, um, the flu vaccine, um, as mentioned a little bit earlier, the vaccine uh, that are currently contained in the, vac uh, in the vaccine um, are actually a good match with what's circulating in the community. But there's some challenges sometimes with, um, you know, the, the potential um, of um, H3N2 and egg-based uh, vaccine technology that there that you know for some reason there might be some issues with um, uh, the effectiveness is uh, is 
impacted by that technology itself. But regardless, the vaccine still does provide uh, good protection, um, even though um, you know it might not be 100% effective all the time. Is it true that the H3N2 virus mutated? And if that is the case, that would raise some real concerns. Well, you know, we always expect that there are always some changes to the flu uh, viruses every single year. That's why, um, you know, the CDC, that's why a lot of um, public health partners monitor what's uh, circulating um, um, all year round and, and do a lot of um, testing to see, you know, what exactly is the best fit for the vaccine every single year. Real quick, how many more weeks of this? Um, you know, usually our flu season can sometimes go out till March, until April, so we've got a ways to go. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you, you coming in. Dr. Tina Tan, Assistant Commissioner and State Epidemiologist. When we come back, did you know that New Jersey was the most important state in the American Revolution? Now there's a museum to celebrate that. We'll take you there when Jersey Matters continues.